Well, if you clicked on the thumbnail title this week uh, about it being a favourite PixInsight process, I bet you're thinking this video is going to be another one of those Russ Croman tools videos. And as brilliant as his processes are, that's not what this video is about this week. My favourite process is local histogram equalisation, and it's a contrast tool. And if you want to know how to use that and get straight into the, the tools of that, then there are chapter markers below in this video where you can do that. But before we start any of that, I'm going to do a few minutes talk on contrast and why that's important in your Astra imaging. So as images, we really like contrasty pictures. On screen, I've just got a regular old picture of our dear Audrey. The pictures had nothing done to it, but we often talk about S-curves. If I just load up this S-curve, currently it's switched off at the minute. This curve has got a uh, anchor point at the top and one at the bottom. This area represents the darker areas of the picture, and this up here represents the brighter pictures. And if I switch these curves on, you'll see a difference in the picture. That's with them on and that's with them off. And for most people viewing this video, not all of us, some of us like really flat images, uh, but for most of us, we will prefer the pop of that as opposed to that. Uh, I know my eyes much prefer that. So that's why we talk about these traditional S curves and that is adding contrast to the picture. So moving this contrast explanation actually into PixInsight, uh, you can see on screen that what we have is a real times preview with the curves tool open. And of course, if we lower the black point here and make the same sort of S curve and brighten up the S curve at the top, what you can see is we've we've changed the dynamic range we've range we've changed the contrast of our um black to white image here so if i turn that back off you can see it's much more even across the range and when we turn the s curve back on what we've done is we've pushed things into the blacks and pushed things into the whites which has given us that contrast now, local histogram equalization does something rather different with contrast. It doesn't do what the traditional S curve is and work across the entire band. What it does is it works at contrast at each band on the local level. It's probably easier for me to show you this in action rather than uh, to explain it. So if I go into the live preview of local histogram equalization I'm going to do something that you would never do with this tool and all this will become clear a little bit later in the video um, first of all you'd never have the amount at a hundred percent all the way to, to one and you would normally not really play with the contrast limit uh, certainly not beyond two but to emphasize what this is doing what I'm going to do is up this contrast limit so if I just push this can you see hopefully on screen what is happening what this is doing is it's applying contrast but rather than apply contrast over the entire range like an s curve would it's applying contrast over each of those graded bands from black through the grays and right up to white so as i push this you can see the effect it's having each band is becoming more contrasty. That's it set down back to one. And as I push the limits up, you can see it's applying those contrasts. If I really push it to something absolutely ridiculous, um, you can see it's having very much a contrast effect just within that region of each band. It's not applying it right across the range, but to each band. So that's really, really important. So let's now take a look at what local histogram equalization actually does to the contrast of a real picture. I've got a um, picture of the Pelican Nebula on screen. This has been processed local histogram equalization you want to be using at the end of or towards the end of your process once everything's been done. So this is a, a black and white image, a, a hydrogen alpha a stacked image and most things have already been done it's been stretched etc now what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn on the um 
actual real-time preview and the first thing you'll notice is it looks absolutely horrific. There are several sliders and I'm going to go through what each one of those does but the first one I'm actually going to go to is the amount. The reason it looks absolutely horrific on screen at the minute is it's 100% applied. Now it does depend on your camera and your and, and what uh, settings you're using and things like that but what I would advise you do is straight away turn this right the way down on the amount for my uh, particular camera I normally set this to about 0.120 sometimes I'll go up as high as uh, to even 300 but if I do that you'll notice in the live preview it does give it a pop but something I want to warn you about is you can overdo it with this tool one of the things I'd really recommend if you're going to be using it regularly is to apply it to your picture, go and have a cup of tea or something, and then come back and have a look at it later to see that you're happy with what it's actually done. So I know for mine that is actually OTT after my cup of tea. So I normally, let's take it back down to 0 0.1. 140, which is a much more subtle effect. And if I toggle on and off you can see what this has done that's with it off that's with it on and you can see it's just added that lovely bit of contrast right across the picture right across those gray scales that's off that's back on again now let's look at some what some of these other controls do so the amount is the most important slider your contrast limit really you don't want it any higher than three it recommends if you mouse over it anything from 1.5 to 3. It's basically uh, the level of uh, contrast limit that you're putting into it. Um, for some reason, the slider allows you to go all the way up to 64. Uh, really, you just want to be keeping it 1, 1.5, 2. That's a more of a set and forget control, but that's what the contrast limit does. So the amount is the main thing. Contrast limit 1.52 on almost all images leave it alone and then the final setting I'm going to go to is the kernel radius and this defines how much air, local area on your pixel scale the tool is applied to. So if you've got a, a small uh, number in here, 64 is fairly low, it's going to look at the, the 64 pixels and apply the contrast around that area. So I could get a little bit lower up with this, which I'll do. Let's move that down to 30. You can't really see too much of a difference there from the 30 to the 64, but it is worth playing around. Again, it's dependent on your, your camera uh, and your DSLR and what you're using. Um, but it, it's uh, it's definitely worth having a look around at that. I, I the default when the tool opens is sixty four. That's a really good uh, setting and start. So really, beyond kernel radius and amount, that's all there is to the tool. Histogram resolution, you can up this to uh, it goes up to twelve bits. Um, but it takes more processing power. It gives you a slightly smoother result but I've not found it over the years to be any different really, uh, certainly not on, on uh, my camera and my settings, but worth experimenting with. And so I'm now going to apply, I'm happy with what that has done, I'm now going to apply that pass of local histogram equalization. It's going to do its magic. I'm going to come out of real time preview and on my screen is the effect it's done and I can I can look at before and I can look at after and I'm really happy with the results. If if you if we just zoom into uh, this kind of structure right here where we've got some nice bright areas and some nice dark areas, you go to the before, it's fairly flat and local histogram equalization, a lovely pop. You can see those blacks are popping, but also the whites. If we draw your eye to just these faint bits of nebula here, you go before, they sort of don't really stand out from, from the background, but the moment it's applied, they do. It really gives it lovely contrast. But let's go back to histogram equalization. I've put the live preview back on, and I've uh, bumped the amount back down uh, to 0.140. Uh, I usually do 
two passes of local histogram equalization. There's the smaller kernel radius, 30, 64, 120, whatever that would be for your camera, which has more of a dramatic effect because you're focusing on a smaller pixel range and a, and a smaller radius. But you, I, you can up the kernel radius so it considers a, a bigger radius. This will have more of a subtle effect but what it will do is over the scale of your image, it will have more of an impact of the, of the wider dynamic range of the picture. So if I zip the kernel radius up to, I normally stick mine around about 390. So turning on the live view, let's see what impact that has at 390. Uh, it takes a little bit more processing power at the higher pixel range um, because it's having to do more computational um, processes. So if we just have a look at that, that's with 390 applied. If I take it off and put it back on again, you'll see it's again adding contrast, but it's over larger areas. It's less concerned with um, the finer details. I think if I just apply this and come out of the live view, it will probably be a little bit easier to see because we can then zoom in. So that's now applied. Let me come out of that live view. So as an example, if we just zoom in just on this area here um, and then we do a before and after, it's less concerned with those smaller structures and what it's done is applied contrast to the bigger structures. So you can see if I, before and after with these lovely bits of nebula, if I go be, before and after, it's not really that's before, that's after, not really changing those, but it is changing this great swathe of nebula over here. If I go before and after, it's just adding that dynamic punch to it and that contrast. And so just to finish, it's probably worth us taking a look at a color image. So on screen is uh, my version of the Tarantula Nebula. Um, nice southern hemisphere object and it's already looking quite nice it's a lovely detailed image got l loads of detail uh, within it but we're going to make it pop even more with the local histogram equalization tool so if I turn on the live view and again we've got this horrible looking view because the strength is just too much so I'm going to keep my kernel radius at 64 and the contrast limit the main slider and the one I'd recommend everyone start with is the amount. Let's just bring this down to, let's call that 100 and, 160 this time. Um, and let's turn that on and off. Yeah, great, lovely little bit of pop there. And what I can see is it's really adding definition into the structure of the nebula. That's with it on, that's with it off, on, and off. In fact, I actually think the strength is probably still a little bit too much. Remember the rule, a little bit um, less is worth a lot more. So let's just bump that down to, maybe I'm going to do that down to 120. I hope you can see with the YouTube compression um, what this is doing. So let's turn it off and back on. It's just added that little bit of punch, maybe up to bump it up to just maybe 140 between between the two readings and before, after. Yeah, I'm definitely quite happy with that. So that's my first pass done. I will let that process um, on that. It doesn't take more than a few seconds. There it is done. Let's just check we're happy with that before and after. Again, um, the smaller the kernel image, the, the bigger the effect it's having really in the, in the smaller regions. And let's do our second pass. So this time we'll open up the live view, um, but let's get that kernel radius all the way back up to, like I said, for my camera, it's about 390. And um, let's just see if that's had an effect before, after, before, after that's quite nice it's just added a bit of punch across the image particularly if i just add the, the process on we'll look at it after the live view's completed so that we can uh, get a bit more of a view zoomed in i know you can do this with live view but i just tend to find it easier once that 
process has completed. So let's just zoom in just to this central area and go before and after. And you can see that that pass has had an effect, but more over the whole image rather than the local areas. So it's a fantastic tool to use and I would highly recommend you using local histogram equalization. I'm sure many of you are already using it, but that's how I use it in my workflow. Um, amount, kernel radius, contrast limit, you don't really need to touch. Um, keep the circular kernel ticked. And that's it. My name's Martin. This is Adventures in Astronomy. I hope you've enjoyed this video.